Okay, um, that's a piece of magnesium. I'm sort of going backwards in one respect with this video. Uh, this video should have been after another one. Or forwards, I should say. Um, I'm putting this particular video ahead of another one, uh, which was a similar cell. Um, but this particular video involves my uh, dream cell, if you like. Um, and I'm doing that because the results have been quite astonishing, really. Uh, I had a, a, a similar cell, a small cell, uh, running for two days again, uh, with a load this time, not with um, a, on a short circuit, although I did short circuit to test the peak current and all the rest of it, but <clears throat> I wanted to put this one first because I've developed um, some new material, basically, um, and it's this stuff. Uh, it's my new activated carbon putty foam call it what you like um, and I've developed it to give me what I want and it's given me what I want trust me so this video um, is ahead of another one so you'll have to watch the other one after this one. It's a smaller cell, performed outstandingly uh, for well over two days. And this one I had to stop because of uh, I didn't coat the magnesium and I didn't want well it's it's degraded and I didn't want it to to degrade even more. So um, that's the reason really I've stopped the test. And I'll put this video first, so have a little look. Getting back to this one here, which is basically the one that uh, has got that new activated carbon foam. Just hope I can get a connection from this. The problem all along with this lot has been connection. Okay, so. I've just wetted this one out, I've put some of that foam on it, and here we go. Okay. Now, if that starts to go up, go up rise, which it is, and I think it's peaked at 690 milliamps, and holding, and that's exactly what I'm after. Now this is hurting my finger, so what I'm going to try and do is do this another way. I need another clamp. Uh, I've got some toggle clamps on order, but they haven't arrived yet. What I'm expecting this to do is rise slightly and stay there, which is what it did. Okay, so we've got 760 milliamps now. What it should do is find its peak and then start to drop. But what I want it to do is drop slowly. Now that's holding quite well there at 750. Now this is a dead short, don't forget. Okay, you know what they say, the proof is in the pudding, and the effect that I wanted, uh, which is a, a better energy density if you like, I think I've just got from that, because it's, it's done exactly what I wanted it to do, which was rise initially, and then drop slowly, so 
I'm uh, kind of happy with that. Um, better test to come. And it's doing exactly the same again now, look. Okay, that, that is holding good current there. And that's the second time in. Short circuit, dead short. Um, so, <clears throat> this one, I think I'm really happy with that. Uh, just go again. There's the rise. I mean, that's a dead short. That's the rise I'm expecting from this material because I've, I've, I've been here before with this material. That's a dead short and the current's rising. They reach a peak and then start to drop. Like that. <clears throat> but it is quite slow which is what I'm after that energy density that I'm talking about in that material so uh, it's looking like my um, activated carbon spongy foam um, we might have got something there Right, sorry about that, I have to go to the men's room. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this again um, in a while with my, bye, with my spongy foam. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I have a new piece of magnesium arrived today. Now, if anyone's been watching what I've been talking about, this is the way I want to construct a cell. Okay. Uh, initially, we've got the carbon fibre weave. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, not tonight but tomorrow, is construct a cell to the size of that magnesium because we're limited to that, which is what you see there. So all of this area there and there will go. Um, I'll construct it in this tonight now but what I wanted to do initially was use this stuff and I did some trials with this with you know activated carbon impregnated in this with a binder um, <clears throat> and the idea was that when you put the cell together and you put the lid on and you bolt the lid you got that, that nice spongy pressure onto the cell as a squared pressure um, that guy in America that builds a similar thing to this um, he's got uh, bolts all the way around and he's got a bolt in the middle I think, I think from the last video I, I saw to get that pressure in the center but I feel that um, if you use the right material as opposed to a soft plastic like this you'd get that squared pressure if you were to use that but now with the activated carbon I've got that spongy foam so I'm going to try that tonight and I'm going to build this and I'm going to test it now this is from China again these magnesiums are from China and this is going to be a low grade material whichever way you look at it in magnesium terms they say it's 99% pure but it, it's not I do know that um, but I'm, I'm going to build it so that's roughly the construction of my cell um, anode cathode there you go uh, 
So yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get on with that in a bit. We'll come back <coughs> and we'll have a look at this um, and see what sort of power we get. Uh, I know what sort of voltage to expect. It was always going to be that copper strip to get as much of the weave as we can. And likewise with this one, that was the original one did. Um, I put two lots of copper strip, but that's a bit, it's, it's just too complicated really. So I'm going to stick to that. And then if I need the other strip, I'll do that. Ultimately, that would have to be riveted. <coughs> so that's what I'm after. Uh, a re a self-regenerating cell um, and these can be stacked to build up a, a 12 volt pack let's say um, and the other thing I want to do is build an identical size capacitor to go with the cell so and that will be a massive surface area for a capacitor <laughs> that will be some super capacitor there's no two ways about that so ideally, the scenario would be that these batteries, these cells, love to give a bit of current. They do not like to sit dormant. So obviously the scenario with a capacitor would be that when you put a load onto the cell, the capacitor would give its initial oomph. Um, and if you're still taking load, then from the battery... Uh, when you release the load, the battery will trickle, uh, charge the capacitor, or quickly charge it, whichever. Uh, and then you've got this all-round situation where, you know, the battery is giving current to the capacitor. Because of the leakage from the capacitor, it should always just give it that little bit of a top-up. So that's the scenario. Um, so that's the first part of what I'm talking about with my cell and how I want to construct it. This is a bit hodgepodge, I know, but uh, um, I made this too big anyway, so um, limited to the size of the magnesium that you can buy on eBay, so so that's that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and build this, and we'll see what we get. The heads up on what's happening now, I've just... I'm going to stick to this particular separator material for the, the minute. I've just spread some of my uh, new um, spongy uh, foamy activated carbon on there. It's a bit slap that, but you know what? You know the main thing is it, it, it's not going anywhere. It's staying there. It's it's pasty. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, <clears throat> so that's that bit. Um, put a separator on there. Now what I need to do is not contaminate that with my activated carbon fingers so I'm just going to go away uh, pause the video I'll clean this up because it's in a bit of a state um, put some uh, electrolyte in fact if I do that now on there so it can soak in and do its magic um, then we want a nice flat surface on that carbon, obviously, so we get maximum contact. So I'm just going to go away and clean this, clean this up. I'll be back. Okay, um, that's nice and clean now. What I'm going to do is put that on there. Put some pressure on it to hopefully. Um, get that activated carbon surface as flat as I can um, I think I'm going to need to use the clamp for this so I'm going to release this cell it shouldn't be too detrimental I don't think 2.75, 2 and 3 quarter amps isn't it so. ok 2.9 just haven't got enough I, I, what I did there I just put some more pressure on the edge um, I'll show you that. Okay, just put some pressure on the edge, and it goes right up. So I just haven't got, you know, the squared pressure that I need. Um, so what I'm going to do is find something that will give me the squared pressure. 
I'll be back. Okay, back again. So, this has all been done in a rush. Um, I'm just about to try this again, just to see what we've got. Okay, 3 amps peak. It's a bit better, isn't it, you know? Um, it's dropping quicker than I would like it to, obviously. Don't know if we got the pressure right on that. But and here we go again, dead short. There's lots of things I can do with this yet, uh, electrolyte wise and all sorts of things um, with the activated carbon. And it was really just to try that new foam more than anything. Um, I haven't even coated the uh, magnesium with um, hydroxide, so I won't leave this as it is. I'll definitely clean that magnesium off for tonight. But there we go. Uh, dead short. Two point three amps. Don't even know if I've got a decent connection on the copper. A lot of don't knows. Well, I hadn't, obviously, because I've just put some pressure on that copper look. And, you know, it's this connection all the time, isn't it? Okay, this is live, folks. You can see it as I see it. I'm using one of these for some proper connection, shall we say. Do it upside down. Okay, now that is as you would bolt a cable to the battery, isn't it? That is a proper connection. So let's just see what we've got now. You know, this is okay, but not good enough. You know that's the same as the other cell, rising first, reaches a peak and then starts to drop slowly. There's been some real degradation there. I didn't cope that. Um okay. Again, current rising first. Reach a peak. And then drop. Slowly. Now, that again, I'll say it again, that is a dead short, so. Uh, we can put a load on it. This is an OR1 resistor, 0.10. We'll try these, um, these two ohms. So, 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 well, we'll try three first. Okay. Okay, 330 milliamps. That's our load. Let's 
So obviously, as a, well, as you know, you've just seen me build this. Uh, there's no preparation time, uh, no effort with electrolytes or anything. Just bolt it all together, test it, and there we go. So that's drawing 330 milliamps quite comfortably by the looks of it. Try and get as close to that 200 milliamps as we can. Right. And we're back to 3 ohms. Okay, so we've we've got that climb again, which is what we're expecting, of course, because that's what it's been doing all along. And that's what these cells tend to do. Looks like it's settling out. No, it's not. It's still rising. 167.6 milliamps. I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> okay, so uh, what we could do is start that. So obviously I'm, you know, I'm not just going to run this video and bore everyone to death, so we've just got the first drop, half a million, no, well point, point one of a million. So what I'll do, um, we're 43 seconds in, look, 45 seconds, um, if you can see that, yeah, okay, and we can see that, okay, 167.3, um, I'll pause the video, I'll just come back to it in a while, and just see how this thing performs. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, I'll pause that. Well, actually, I've come back because that's now gone up, hasn't it? Now, there's a reason for that. I've just touched that contact there. So, again, Bad contacts all round, really. So I'll, I'll pause the video again. Okay, what I've just done is I've cleaned up the uh, contact there. I've disturbed it a little bit. Um, it's rising again. We are... 6 minutes 22 seconds into the test it's bound to rise a little bit now because I've just disturbed it I forgot to clean the magnesium on this side so that's that, we've still got 3 ohms and really uh, I'm guessing that I should put a clip on this as well because we do lose contact there as well in the nail. Just let that drop. Okay, so seven minutes in. 
healthy current. Drop it to 166 milliamps. Start the video again. See where we are on the clock. So you know there's no fudging. Um, or trickery or anything like that. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, because I like this kind of stuff, I'm going to put this 0.1 ohm resistor on it which will be not far from a dead short really and see what it does with that um, as I say I'm not going to leave this as it is because I haven't coated the magnesium and that's my newest latest piece of magnesium and I don't want to ruin it just for the sake of this um, because obviously I've got other things to be doing with this now um, I mean for the footprint of it um, it's not brilliant but I suppose it's the capacity of it in terms of energy and how long it will give you the energy for uh, I mean as I've said before you know I've had over 2 amps out of a piece like that and I've had over 2 amps out of a piece like that in terms of footprint and I've had two amps out of that, which is zinc. So different electrolytes, different metals, different stories. Uh, so nine minutes in. Um, Hundred and sixty-six point nine milliamps. Okay, off. Went away there, and we've got a little bit uh, below where I said uh, we're 12 minutes 34 in. I'm going to disconnect that, as I said, and connect up this OR1.10. See what we get. Oh yeah, we're on the wrong scale, aren't we? <laughs> Back to the 10 amp scale. Silly me. Okay. Um, I don't know why, but my camera just turned off. I've done what I said. I've disconnected the uh, the three ohms. Can you see that? Having some problems tonight with these meters. Okay, we're now 13 minutes in. I've, I'm connecting up the uh, 0.1 ohm resistor. See what current we get with that. And the rise again, as we'd expect. I'm just going to try and put a clip on this before we go any further. Okay, so we've got 1.5 amps, 1.51, 2, 3, and it's going to settle out. I think that's the settling point now, 1.54 amps. Now in terms of what I was saying about adjustments to do with this, this is all brand new now. Um, this is using my... I was just going to say something then. <laughs> I knew it was going to change. My new... Um, foamy, spongy, foamy, uh, activated carbon. Now, in terms of adjustments, uh, obviously that isn't just activated carbon, is it? Uh, to, to foam it up and make it, it's almost kind of rubbery, really. Now, to make this perform better, there's going to be a, adjustments in the electrolyte, and there's going to be adjustments in this, especially this. Um, 
to make the cell perform better, obviously. Um, you've seen this as I've seen it. It was all fresh, all brand new, in front of the camera. Um, so yeah, there's a, a lot to do. Now, I'm happy with that. I'm really, really happy with that. And if I can get it to perform the way I want it to perform, then that'll be uh, fantastic. And it's onwards and upwards with this particular cell. Um, I don't have to use this stuff. Uh, in reality, this was a nice idea, but if you think about, if we were talking graphene, it would be a different story with surface area, but because it's activated carbon, um, I think when you're using this stuff, you need as much of this, the capacity of this as you can get, and that would take away a lot of your capacity, so... Um, yeah, I got it to work, but this is better. This is where I want to be. It's you know it, it's it's pliable. It's drying out a bit now and it's cracking, but uh, you know it wasn't like this earlier on today. So okay, so <clears throat> that's not doing too bad, is it? Current wise, you know, I've got that uh, higher energy that I wanted, not in terms of amperage, but uh, capacity, storage, energy storage. So, what I'll do is I'll pause the video again and I'll come back. And I will let that get down to uh, one amp. I mean, we're 17 minutes into this testing phase now. Um, don't know how long that's been on. Uh, you can always look back on the video. But that is holding well, as far as I'm concerned. Now, don't forget. <laughs> ah, what did I do? not something okay didn't want to do that whatever it was ah mm, yeah okay <laughs> this is terrible these connections are just diabolical there's rust everywhere Can you still see that? I believe so. Oh dear. Okay, so as I say, we'll let that get down to one amp. As I was saying, in terms of energy that this is now giving, um, I'm I'm impressed. I'm well impressed because I mean a point one ohm resistor that that's really close to the dead short, and we're now nineteen minutes and forty seconds in. So ultimately, what I'm after now, obviously, is I want to uh, let that get down to one amp, let it rest, and see if we got a. Um, a recovery because that's what this is all about um, recovering cells self regenerating crystal cells now when I think that if I can find it I'm to do this because this cell has been running since uh, it's rubbed off a little bit but that cell was the first crystal cell. I actually believe this, but uh, two things have just happened again. My phone switched off. I've got to plug this charger in for one. Uh, dropping the phone, that is. Um, I can get the 
damn thing plugged in there. Okay, charger plugged in. The second thing my phone said to me again was that uh, I was out of memory again. Now I know I'm not out of memory because I've just dumped all the files, so I'm really getting problems tonight with this. Uh, what I was going to do was um, just put this into a short again. Well, actually, no, I won't do that. What I'll do, I'll put this 0.1 ohm resistor back on. Because I think uh, the dead short situation is neither here nor there, really. Who wants to dead short a cell at the end of the day? So we'll do that. <laughs> and we get... Not a lot. <laughs> These cells really do like to continue what they're doing. They don't like to be stopped. They like current. They like to be. They like to be drawn. You know, giving some current. So. I'm just going to put that back on. Um, if I'm sounding a bit fed up, it's because I am. So, as we'd expect, it's on the rise. It's quite possibly dried out a bit, this as, as well. And the other thing that's bound to have happened is that the, uh, the magnesium has, has tarnished badly or started to corrode or whatever uh, so just see where this gets to now still got the timer running 46 minutes into this testing phase um, I need a drink Still, you get your ups and downs, and that's all there is to it, in it, you know. But uh, that phone, for some reason, is really getting to me now. Um, I've never had this before with that phone, but uh, okay, it's still going up, 580 milliamps. I've opened my mouth; it'll probably drop down. Okay, um, it's still on the up. Now, this isn't something that I've planned, you know, uh, cards on the table. This is just something that happens with this particular design for some reason. Um, they haven't all done it. Um, but earlier on, I kind of uh, sort of worked something out and uh, I've implemented that here. And as you can see, that's what's happening. That's what happened earlier on with that smaller cell, which was just here, um, tested for the first time. And that's what's happening now. So um, I'm going to call it a day in a minute because uh, I'm not happy with this phone. Uh, it's probably got salt on the brain, like me. Okay, so that's. I mean that is some recovery for the amount, the period of time that we disconnected for and I was yapping on and on and on as usual, um, that is some recovery look, I mean that's got a 0.1 ohm resistor, it's almost a dead short, as near as damn it, um, and look at it. Is incredible <laughs> that really is incredible in fact it's so incredible I'm gonna celebrate look at that
Okay, I think we've reached this level. That's going to go down to 7.6 now. I might even have two of these tonight. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> 790 milliamps. tell you what that's the stuff in it that is the stuff and again um, I think um, although I've concocted that out of my own head um, I've got I've got to give credit where it's due again um, to Robert Murray Smith because stuff like that I wouldn't have even dreamt of uh, concocting really without um, watching Robert's videos. You know, we've seen seen him make foams and gels and all sorts of stuff. Um, admittedly, the method I've used is not one of his methods. It's my own method of how I've produced that um, and how I've... Uh, What's the word? Functionalized that carbon. Um, but as I say, without watching this, without watching someone else doing something similar, uh, you don't get these ideas. So then, as he quite rightly says, and I'm glad he does, and I'm glad he doesn't give us all of the answers, he'll give you a scenario and say, right, go and work with that go and experiment and I'm glad he's done that because that's what he's made me do time and time again um, I've been working with um, polyvinyl pyrrolidines and or pyrrolidine pyrrolidine never get that bit right uh, you know um, never heard of it until he mentioned it in one of his videos and you know I've gone away and tried stuff like that um, your polyvinyl acetates and your polyvinyl alcohols and stuff like that I knew a little bit about that sort of stuff and various other binders and um, carriers and all the rest of it but you know I've learned so much from Robert as well um, without these little hints uh, that, that he sometimes gives. Sometimes he'll, he'll do something and give you the whole recipe, you know. Uh, but for the most part, you know, he'll say, right, that's what you've got to work with. Go away and work with it and come up with something. And that's, that's brilliant. I've said this before uh, on one of my other videos. You know, there's no point in sitting in an exam, not knowing the answers to the questions, asking the chap next door to you what the answers are and he gives you all of the answers what have you learned? Zippo Nada look at this <laughs> look at that yeah you've learned nothing pointless absolutely pointless someone just saying oh yeah here's the formula go and do that Okay, I think we've reached a bit of a plateau there. I thought it was going to be a long time ago, but it weren't. It's there. 800 milliamps. We are now 54 minutes in. Um, not on this particular phase, but in total. Going to be a long video, but a lot of my videos are long um, 
stickers. I explain things and, you know, I show things and I talk a lot. So, if you don't like it, don't watch them. But, uh, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to pause this uh, and come back. It's 54, um, I think I'll, I'll come back on the hour, 55 minutes, another 5 minutes, and we'll see where it is. We're on the hour, um, turn the video back on as promised, uh, we're still on 740 milliamps. Now, as much as I love these tests, um, I would love to leave that running and I would love to see where that is at 12 o'clock this evening. It is uh, 9.40 p.m. at the moment. Um, but I'm not going to waste that piece of magnesium in there. As I say, I haven't coated it. Um, it's probably at the moment in a sorry state. I'd be amazed if it isn't. So, um, you can see that that cell is working remarkably well. I mean, that's three quarters of an amp, you know. It's, I know it's not massive power, but, you know, for a, a, a cell that gave, uh, what was it, two and a half amps peak or 2.6 amps or 2.75 or something like that, to be doing that now is incredible. So, uh, I'm going to kind of stop this now, uh, take this apart, um, which I'll do on camera, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll have a little look at that. Um, this this here is a new piece of separator material that I was hoping for. Um, can't seem to penetrate it, but I'll leave that to one side. Um, come back to it in an hour's time and see if... Uh, the electrolytes penetrated it so um, that I'm gonna stop because I don't need it um, leave that there the load I'm gonna take off And I'm going to give it 10 seconds <laughs> and see what happens. And reconnect it. <laughs> because I want to see this go up again. Now that's me uh, moving, so ah, I know what I'll do. I'll get a better connection than that. Look, look at that. Straight back to 710 milliamps. I'll tell a lie. <laughs> 720 <laughs> ish. I'm just want I'm I'm just gonna wait now until that either goes to a north or a two. <coughs> okay. I'll remove the load. As much as I'd like to <laughs> Try that again in another 20 seconds or a minute. I'm just not going to do it because I 
don't want that uh, magnesium to degrade so what I will do is remove that oh yeah yeah no coating you see yeah so that's what happens isn't it now I don't know how detrimental that is you see it on all sorts of batteries but it's it's like um it's it's like a sludge that's formed on there i just it's i just don't know i've got no idea uh, there is a word for it and i can't i can't remember what the word is uh, Now, that is quite dry, that. Yeah, that is, is very, very dry. So, obviously, um, one of the after effects of what I've just done is that that cell has completely dried out. I mean, that is just soaking up electrolyte like mad. That was like a sponge then. Wish I could remember what this is called. Okay, so there's been some degradation on the surface there, um, which I definitely wasn't getting when I put the uh, hydroxide coating on there. Um, it's definitely the way forward. Very sludgy. Gonna have to do a bit more research, that's all. Read some more papers. Um, but one thing I do know is that of all these metals, Magnesium is probably one of the toughest to deal with. It's, it's, it's one of the hardest materials to use because of this sort of stuff. Uh, you can overcome it with aluminium, you can overcome it with copper, um, you can overcome it with zinc. I know that because, you know, um, I've, I've been using that piece of zinc for many, many, many tests and it hasn't degraded in my electrolyte which is um, well there's a batch one batch there's another batch that clear stuff is the stuff I use for the electrolyte a very active material uh, I don't know if we can get it to react now yeah look you just you touch it and it off it goes it's like a volcano but once you draw that clear stuff off um, it's quite usable that's probably going to be the same yeah there it goes look volcano so there we go then um, I would hope that you've learnt some of this as much as me. Um, that's my cell. All part of it. What I'm going to do now is finish my drink. And I'm going to go off and make a video. Um, any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, any help I'll be glad to receive it um, if you know sort of 
more about magnesium than I do, um, and especially how to combat some of this, then that's great. Um, because I have stopped that. Um, what's happened there is, uh, it looks like it's given up some magnesium, obviously. Um, why, I don't know. But, uh, obviously, in, in, in some of these smaller cells that I've uh, been testing, I haven't had that because I coated it with uh, hydroxide. So, if there's anyone out there that knows a bit more than me, um, I'm just an amateur, really, you know. Uh, I'm sort of blindfolded walking through the woods, really. Um, so, yeah. Give us a shout, I'll be glad to hear from you, over and out, oh Pete, do some more battery videos mate, you love them, <laughs> I, <coughs> I got, it's at this point, I've got to say something about Pete, um, I've said a lot about Pete actually, uh, I love the guy, I think he's great, um, uh, I, I made a comment, um, couple of weeks back I think on one of my videos about people that have been developing these um, crystal cells for years now um, you know you can go back literally for years and uh, all they ever do is they design this crystal cell and they go oh look I can light an LED <laughs> um, and I think, is that it? You know? And you don't see any progression with that. Uh, and the reason I'm mentioning this now, again, uh, talking of Pete, um, you know, if you watch Pete's videos, Pete also uses a jewel thief and an LED. Now, as far as Pete's concerned, um, Pete has trialled many, 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 many materials. He's done a lot of videos. Um, and his jewel thief and his LED was to test that particular setup or that particular cell, that particular material. Uh, so it, it's a different story. You know, I'm not putting Pete in this category of, oh, look, I've designed a, a battery look and I can light an LED because it, it's not the same. Um, everyone else that's all they do I've seen no progress whatsoever uh, you know Pete's done some fantastic videos um, admittedly most of it uh, with graphene and graphite graphite graphene but uh, you know all sorts of scenarios, all sorts of electrolytes, and you know his little LED circuit there with his his dual thief to test what he's just done. Um, obviously, you'd see his LED light up dimly, or you'd see it light up brightly, um, and that's an indication of uh, your voltage and you know what current it's giving you. So, you know. Pete would use that jewel thief and that LED as um, an indicator, if you like, as to what's going on. And he got to know that uh, jewel thief circuit and his LED, and he knew exactly what was going on, uh, when it was going on. But getting back to kind of everyone else that's, you know, done this sort of stuff. I mean, yeah, I've seen people go, oh, look at me, I've, you know, I've got 500 milliamps and... Uh, I've got an amp and peak and all the rest of it, but these things um, in a solid state um, They just don't give the current in that setup by which I mean uh, You know we use borax um, and a salt and uh, What else is it borax? Uh, salt I always forget this. Um, borax, salt, alum, yeah, alum, 
and Epsom salts and sometimes Rochelle salts and stuff like that and it's cooked until they uh, form a solid which is what I did with this one uh, but in that setup the reality is it's never going to give a lot of current um, I've gone past that to where I am now um, I don't want to light any LEDs uh, I don't want to start a car just yet <laughs> uh, da 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 you know I'm going on again and on so happy days speak to you soon